Welcome to worship this day, this Sunday, which is actually the second Sunday of Christmas, but we're celebrating Epiphany today, as Epiphany is January 6th, so we, we'll call this Epiphany Sunday. Uh, so we're just overjoyed to see you guys all here this day. Um, everything, as we've gotten used to worshiping in, during this COVID time, continues to to be true as far as not singing. Um, we'll, our hymns that we will recite some and then some will have sung for us and we can worship and, and let the word come to us in that way this day. So we do begin by going back to our baptism and the promise of God's grace and forgiveness. So please stand if you're here um, in person in our sanctuary or at home, you can still stand as we turn and we confess our sins and hear the good news. The sun of righteousness shall shine with beams of healing. Let us gather under the wings of God's mercy. Gracious God, we acknowledge we are sinners and we confess our sins. Those known to us that burden our hearts and those unknown to us but seen by you. We know that before you nothing remains hidden, and in you everything is revealed. Free us from the slavery of sin. Liberate us from the bondage of guilt. Work in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. With a heart full of mercy and compassion, God saves us and declares this truth, your sins are forgiven. Christ, the dawn from on high, shines upon us and by the light of the Holy Spirit now guides our feet into the way of peace. Glory to God. And you may be seated as we have our hymn sung to us. Quick note. It's uh, We Three Kings. We had a little bulletin error. I took a few days off. We all took a few days off. It'll be all right. <laughs> Feel free to hum along, because you know this one, and it's a fun song to hum to.
its bitter perfume breathes a life of gathering gloom soaring sighing bleeding dying sealed in a stoled tomb oh star of wonder star grace and peace of Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, be with you all. And we don't have the Kyrie in him praise. Oh, we do. Okay, good. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by leading of a star. Lead us now by faith to see and know your presence in our lives and in our world through whatever struggles may come. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Kids, if we got kids today, come on up. <laughs> yeah, come on up, guys. Let's just come right here, okay? You guys want to have a seat right there? Yeah, yeah. Got it. 
Oh, okay. Actually, let's come over here. Okay. I'm sorry. I forget that there are those, you know, there are those who want to see you guys there at home too who are viewing in. Well, are you guys super excited about opening your presents in three days? You are? You nodded your head yes. Are you, are you going to open your, your Christmas presents in three days? Are you excited about that? You're not? No? Well, when are you going to open them? You already did? You opened them before the wise men got here? Really? Yeah, so did we. We hear today that the wise men bring gifts, though, don't we? Right? Do you know what those gifts are? Do you guys know? Here, maybe I can... Oh, I will use that after all. Let's see if you guys know the gifts today. I can hear them at home. What do you guys think? Can you come up with the gifts that the wise men bring today? Here, go ahead and take that. It's on. What do you think there, Lisa? Do you know? What do they bring? Hmm. <laughs> Gold. Gold is one, right? Yep. There's two more. Blankets. Frankincense, that's right. Incense, like a perfume. Yep, mm hmm And what's the last one? Myrrh. <laughs> Myrrh, that's right. Yep, I've, where I grew up, they said that was macaroni hamburger casserole because I grew up in a casserole culture. But that's not really what it was. It was also a perfume. And some of those are actually um, spices that would be used or, or um, perfumes that would be used when someone was buried, like to anoint a body when it was buried. So it kind of tells us what's going to happen with Jesus, doesn't it? Right? That he's going to give his life for us. Right? So why do you think we open presents then on Christmas or Christmas Eve instead of opening them on January 6th? Do you guys have any ideas? Yeah? Yeah. Well, what was the gift we got on Christmas Eve? Was there a gift that day too? That might be more valuable than gold or frankincense or myrrh or anything else? Even casserole, even more valuable than that? <laughs> well, not green bean casserole. Sorry, I know that's, that's just the end-all be-all. But what gift did we get on Christmas? A pedal bike. You got a pedal bike? That sounds better than, I don't know about gold, but it sounds better than incense or myrrh. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, we got Jesus as a gift. And that's why we open gifts on that day, because we've received a gift. But now, on this day, on this um, epiphany, we get the chance to give our gifts. And we get the chance to look for where that light is. You know, when those wise men came to, to um, the capital city, they were looking at that star and they were following it, weren't they? Yep. But why wasn't everybody following it? I mean, in some of the pictures we see today, it looks like that star is huge. But I wonder, maybe it was just a little bit of light. Maybe you had to really be watching and paying attention to see that little light and to find where Jesus was and to bring your gifts to him. And I wonder if this new year, this happy new year, this blessed new year, will be a year where we can search and we can look for and find where Jesus is, is working, where God is with us. And we can bring our gifts of joy and comfort and love and all the things we have to offer. Do you think we could do that here in 2021? Another new year of giving our gifts to God? I think so. That would make us kind of like those wise men, wise young women like yourselves, right? Well, let's pray today, and let's do a repeat prayer. Dear God, thank you that your light shines in this year and in all of our lives. May we seek it. Amen. Thanks, guys, for coming up. I can take that. Thank you. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. 
your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them that the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of our Lord. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, what to say on a day like this? after a year like that, (laughs) and looking forward with hope and possibility, and yes, I know, at least a little bit of caution. I can say that I've been guilty of pinning my hopes on this new year, having some kind of magical powers to change the situation of everything people struggle with, from issues with extended or immediate family even, to our whole pandemic-riddled world. I know I pin my hopes on tangible things like vaccines, but also the vague promise or, of change or reform, which may have some power, for sure, or may just be feeding my short attention. Hey, look, a squirrel. Um, I've been feeling a bit of pressure, even, to deliver a really good sermon today. I mean, a real zinger of hope on this day of all days because it seems like 2021 is under a lot of pressure to perform, to excel, to make something of, what do you call a year? Herself, himself, itself? And I want to help him or her or it get off to a good start because 2021 is supposed to be the year where the masked singer will no longer be the most ironic show on TV right? Where we look forward to removing our masks in order to sing safely again, where pews and bar stools will fill up and free hug signs will be dusted off, and you can kiss grandma when she comes off, when she walks in your door on Thanksgiving for dinner after flying on a full airplane and taking a loaded train to the ferry dock. A year where we can watch movies without cringing when we see the actors gathering at parties. Has this happened to you too? A year where ICU nurses, in all seriousness, doze a bit on the job because it's a slow night. A year ago when you were resolving to drink less Diet Coke or lose 10 pounds or call your mom every week or your kids every week or get straight A's in school, did you ever dream you'd be wishing for the things you were wishing for this new year? I've heard stories over the years, of course, of of young people in two-thirds of the world countries wishing with all their hearts to be able to have the funds to get the uniform or the books or just to have the time from survival mode to go to school. 
But to hear that longing from young people in the United States is kind of unexpected. And maybe my social media is broken, I don't know, but I have not heard a single resolution from anyone this past week. Maybe you have, maybe you've made one, but maybe that's because our resolutions are so shared and so full of deep longing that we don't even need to say them out loud. Or maybe we fear if we do, we'll jinx it somehow. Or maybe we're just tired. I will say that the new year did meet us with an incredible sermon. That's the last name of the Ohio State running back that scampered all over Clemson on New Year's night, if you saw that. But honestly, the good news for this day, for this year, for this life, is even more obvious than Mr. Sermon's sparkling statistics that night. You see, in the years, not just the year, but in the years following a long and difficult exile, God's people finally return to their home. But they have to rebuild pretty much everything. And many of the issues they face at this time are out of their control. There are land disputes between those who were left behind and those who are returning. It is a struggle to, re- to figure out the priorities of rebuilding. The people are free to a certain extent, but still they're under the control of the, Persian, the Persians who freed them. They are trying to hold on to hope, to a promise of a better time, but they are weary and they are burdened and they are struggling to find where that hope is. And the gospel of the prophet Isaiah is this. You arise, you shine. Why? Because your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I love the start to this passage in Isaiah in part because the you is singular. But not just because God is talking to one person, you know, you and you and you. Each, you know, each of us individually. The you is singular because God is addressing God's people as one unified people. There's this this intimacy uh, to God speaking to us as one But it's not just an intimacy with God. It is that. But God initiates this togetherness so that it may bleed into our connections with one another as well. Which is fascinating to me because given the the vast differences among God's people, the arguments that are going on, I mean seriously vast in this setting and in ours as well. But also because this part of Isaiah is filled with images of the nation streaming to the people of God, streaming to this nation that is now in chaos, that is, that is rebuilding once again. You beautiful variety, God says. You singular, my beloved people. You arise. You shine. Why? Because it's a new year? No. Because there is a vaccine? No. Because of my personal inner light or hope? No, actually. Because of something God has done. Because your light has arisen. Did you raise it? No. Did it come from inside of you? No. You get the picture. God is shining presently in our desolation. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. It has risen upon us. And it's interesting because then we have to ask, well, who is this Lord? Well, not some far-off God of whatever up in heaven or space somewhere, not some concept somewhere, but the Lord, Yahweh, the name God revealed to Moses to give to the people when they were in slavery. It has vast meaning and interpretation, but it's connected to, to God saying to Moses in that burning bush moment, I am who I am. Or my favorite way to translate that is is also, I will be who I will be. You see, the Lord is the one who shows up in the way that is necessary for whatever the present struggle might be. The one who showed up in Egypt when when you were slaves. Who showed up in the promise to David to establish that kingdom forever. 
who showed up in this Isaiah time for you exiled people returning home, who showed up in the manger on Christmas Eve, and who shows up in our time and for our time as well. I mean, I have to admit, I'm kind of tentative to arise and shine until I see things getting tangibly better. But this call from God isn't to a people in a getting better situation. And it almost, it seems kind of like it almost hardly ever is. God calls for this response to arise and shine at a pretty low point in the people's history. Because the reason to arise and shine isn't based on anything that they've done and any of their accomplishments. It isn't based on the situation they're in, high or low. It is based on an I am and an I will be God for us. One whose pinnacle of showing up is still fresh in our minds. At the end of a year, we are trying to get out of our minds. But it isn't pie in the sky. It isn't Bobby McFerrin, don't worry, be happy time. Immediately after the call to arise and to shine, God names the reality in which God's people are in, names the contrast to God's light. Now in Christ, we know the level of empathy and understanding of the human situation that God has. But here God acknowledges the darkness that covers the land. This isn't a simple escape, but it is a presence within as they say, the struggle is real, and as we know, the struggle is real. And then God immediately pours out blessings, and God sets a vision of healing and prosperity that must seem impossible in the vision of God's people who are wrapped in that darkness. And just as, as that vision might create blindness by its radiant light, God gets very specific if we continue to read on in Isaiah and then spill over into chapter 61 where God speaks about very specific things, giving sight to the blind, release to the captives, comfort for the mourning, binding up of broken hearts. I think today that would also say the healing of the nations. God gives a sermon to us today for this new year, a revelation of good news today. That's both this kind of transcendent vision, but also a very real and present healing, a power over the darkness, but also a presence within it, a vision of the destination, and also an accompaniment on the journey to get there. Honestly, I don't know how to enter this year. If I should err on the side of caution or if I should err on the side of optimism. I've said it to people, but I don't know if it is going to be a happy new year. But what I do know is that it is already a blessed new year. It is already a year occupied with healing and forgiving and renewing light. I heard a story about a family whose daughter broke down on December 21st, just kind of, you know, lost it. That's the darkest and shortest day of the year, as you may know. It's often occupied with a blue Christmas or longest night service. And it was cloudy and raining that day, if you remember. And this little girl's tears just streamed out of her, kind of in sync with the rain as, as the weight of 2020 overwhelmed her little mind and her little heart. Her parents said that she didn't know why she was crying, but, but when they asked her, she just said, I don't know, I guess COVID and, and all of that. That same night, the Star of Bethlehem, as it's sometimes called, shone in the Southwest. It was there, but unless you were in an airplane, none of us around here could see it. <clears throat> sometimes... Sometimes it's like that, isn't it? Well, that same family went out on Christmas Eve. They went out to a high place up in Seabeck, and they, it was a clear night. If you remember Christmas Eve, we were so thankful for that clear night so we could be outside for part of our worship or all of our worship at five. But it was a clear night, and they went up on a hill in order to see that Bethlehem star, and it was clear 
and it was bright and it was shining there on the horizon. And yes, I know it's not a star, it's a convergence of planets, I get, a, I get all of that. But there it was, and they could see it. And sometimes it's like that too. Now, I don't know the forecast for 2021. I don't know how much it, if it's going to be cloudy and, and sunny, and I'm not talking about Washington weather versus Arizona weather and all that. I don't know what it's going to bring. But I know that the light is there, no matter what the weather is down here. And as we are blessed by that light, both transcendent above and present below, we are called to seek it out. We are called to share it. We are called to just point to it, to bask in its light, to understand that it's there when we can't seem to see it, and to receive its blessing and to share its blessing this year and every year after. The light shines in the darkness. That was a little slow. The light shines in the darkness. May that be our blessing this year and always. Amen. As Justin comes forward to lead us in reciting our hymn today, for those in person, I'd love you to take out a LBW, your green hymnal, and turn to hymn 76. And Justin will. Well, morning star, how fair and bright. It's hymn 76, so if you've got the bullets in, it's wrong. The words on the screen will be correct. But if you want to recite, uh, they're in the behind the pews there. <clears throat> o morning star, how fair and bright. You shine with God's own truth and light, aglow with grace and mercy. Of Jacob's race, King David's son, our Lord and Master, you have won our hearts to serve you only. Lowly, holy, great and glorious, all victorious, rich in blessing, rule and might or all possessing. Come, heavenly bridegroom, light divine, and deep within our hearts now shine, there light a flame undying. In our body, let us be as living branches of a tree, your life our lives supplying. Now, though daily earth's deep sadness may perplex us and distress us, yet with heavenly joy you bless us. Lord, when you look on us in love, at once there falls from God above a ray of purest pleasure. Your word and spirit, flesh and blood, refresh our souls with heavenly food. You are our dearest treasure. Let your mercy warm and cheer us, O oh, draw near us. For you teach us God's own love through you has reached us. Almighty Father, in your Son you loved us. When not yet begun this old earth's foundation, your Son has ransomed us in love to live in him here and above. This is your great salvation. Alleluia. Christ the living, to us giving life forever. Keep us yours and fail us never. What joy to know when life is past. The Lord we love is first and last, the end and the beginning. He will one day, O oh glorious grace, transport us to that happy place beyond all tears and sinning. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus crown of gladness, we are yearning for the day of your returning. Oh, let the harps breathe forth in sound, our joy be all with music crowned, our voices gaily blending. For Christ goes with us all the way, today, tomorrow, every day. His love is never ending. Sing out, ring out, jubilation, exultation, tell the story, great is he the King of glory. Amen, amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we respond to God's word and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Grace and glory you have through the person and work of Jesus Christ revealed the true light and named the darkness that continues to plague us. Give us your spirit that we continue to look for that light and let the light of Christ shine brightly in and through us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we cry out to you for relief for so many suffering throughout the world. Continue to bless with your spirit with all the people and organizations bringing help and support. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, we pray for all our elected leaders in their charge to protect our country from threats, both foreign and domestic. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We hold before you our country and the unseen cybersecurity threats that we continue to face. Bless all those working to guard our country from cyber attacks in both the private and government sectors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Pour out your wisdom, Lord, on all states that they be as efficient as possible in the vaccination process. Continue to bring your aid to our worldwide battle with COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth and peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in need, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, break through the one in five active Christians who during COVID-19 have completely checked out of worship and community. Help us all to reach out to each other and stay vigilant in giving your word opportunity to work in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Be with our homes in this new calendar year. Bring healing, reconciliation, and new life. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we do continue to pray for Michael in the death of his father and the Price family in the death of Bud. God, we pray for Clara as she continues to recover from her fall and broken arm. Lord, we give thanks that Lisa Stevens is recovering well and, and that she can be with us this day in worship. God, we pray for all those who are battling cancer. We pray for Dave Dietz, Kathy Schaefer, Betty Yates, John Adair, Julie Enger, Melanie Evanelli, Jim Weisbrot, Elizabeth Domaheide, Dave Ryan, Jim McKelvey, Ron Maddox, Kathy Schaefer, and Carol Wales. Lord, bring your healing to these. God, we pray for our deployed and military support and their family. For Brandon, for Paul, Jillian, Bradley, Rebecca, Eric, Megan, Jared, Andrew, David, and all their families. God, we pray for all those on our continued prayer list who need your care and grace. And Lord, we bring now others to you aloud or in the quiet of our hearts. God, we pray for Joyce Berry as she awaits tests after being hospitalized, and we pray for Linda Burt for her healing and help. Door. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Now, as we come to your table, we pray, Lord, that the light that shone, the light that we have heard and seen this day, that that light will come to us in this bread and wine, and that we will be strengthened in our faith, that we will know this encounter of your love and forgiveness and grace, and we will then indeed be empowered to live out your light and be light to the nations. And so we pray all of this trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of that peace with those in your household or in your bubble. And then give the wave and the peace to those who are here and those that are home. We certainly... Um, We certainly want you to be sharing the peace as well. And then you may be seated. Certainly blessings to you this day. We want to stay connected and support you as best we can and hope you'll use our Connect card. We love it when people use that. You can just take a picture of it with your QR reader on your phone. Um, and you can give us some information, um, we, whether you'd like a pastoral phone call or give a prayer request or an update on how you're doing or give us feedback on how we are doing. Um, you heard in the prayers a petition for those who have gotten disconnected, and studies are showing that one in five um, people who were active in church are not plugging in digitally or any other ways um, during this COVID time. And so, so we want to reach out. We want to be connected. We're a large congregation, and so this is your way to reach out and ask for help or support in any way that you can. Um, for those, um, let's see, for those here in person today, please uh, feel free to take one of the remaining poinsettias home with you after worship. Um, after this, they go in the composting, so we'd love for you to take those home for you, with you. Whether you bought one or not, please feel free. Make sure you've downloaded our church app if you haven't. This is a great way to stay connected and involved in our ministry, especially in these times. And you'll see there a button to take our children's ministry survey. Uh, families with kids, we want to hear from you. Our new director of um, children and family ministry, um, Jessica Voigt, would love to hear from you. Um, we give thanks for all those who filled out the women's ministry survey. Um, great feedback there. Um, for Kim and for our, our ministry. So please take time to do that and fill out that and download that app and all the devotions are there, all the worship services are there. Um, it's just a great resource. Adult education classes are right there at your fingertips now. Um, so this is the time in our worship where as part of our response to the good news, we give our treasures, which represent all the ways we share God's blessings while we will not pass an offering plate here, of course, you can drop your offering physically in the back um, after we're sent out if you haven't already done so, or you can give um, using our church app again or our website or by scanning the QR code that is um, uh, before you now. And thanks for all these gifts returned to God. Re we receive God's word in song and pray. God of light, we praise, we praise you. you. Sorry about that. We praise you for your constant care and give thanks that you have claimed us as your own people. 
Thank you for drawing us to this place where your word is revealed and our lives are connected. Bless these tithes and offerings as they are joyfully returned to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And we pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God are ready for the people of God. Those of you here in the sanctuary may be seated. As we're pretty familiar now with receiving communion, but in case we have some new folks here, you have three options when you come forward. There's a gluten-free um, packet with the juice or wine and gluten-free, and then there's a packet with ju juice and the wafer, and then wine and the wafer. Um, when you receive it, I encourage you to open the bread side first and then turn and and open and also i want to just invite you we want to keep six feet of space but you don't have to just stand by the receptacle to receive you could go to a in front of the altar um, and and then simply deposit the the remains in the um, receptacle so um, just know that you're able to do that if you would like the gifts of god indeed are ready for the people of god
I invite you to stand. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gifts of his body and blood, strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may live in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. Be sent forth this day with God's blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And you... We are grace-filled. Go in peace. Share the good news.